Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Joe Schroeder. He's with the University of Kentucky Extension Farm Stress Management Specialist there. Good morning, Joe. Morning. Nice to see you. Well, I'm glad you're here today because September is National um, Preparedness Month when we talk about disasters and you have a lot of experience with that. And we're just going to talk today a little bit about how how would be the best way and what happens to us when disaster happens. And you know, a lot of times we think that we're prepared for a disaster, but when it happens, a lot of times there's some emotion that goes into it, some stress, some, some anxiety that happens, and sometimes it's hard to plan for those things. Right. Yeah, typically what, what happens in a disaster, <clears throat> regardless of what kind of disaster it is, is people uh, sort of lose their minds. You know, there's so much stress that you can't operate um, in the way that you normally do. Your, your brain is in fight or flight. So uh, you're sort of s swimming in, in stress and anxiety, and uh, that's, that's a tough time to keep all of the appropriate steps uh, in front of your mind. So um, when we show up to respond to farm crises, or farm disasters in a community, whether it's an isolated event or a community event. Uh, we see a lot of uh, folks who um, just can't make the best decisions because they are not uh, fully present. So our job is to sort of just bring in um, some of the lessons that we've learned from previous disasters and help folks uh, gather their, you know, their mind and, and be able to respond appropriately. And, be aware sort of of, what, of what's happening, both in the immediate sense and in the long-term sense. You know, what steps do you need to take to make sure that your, your farm's gonna be okay, your insurance is covered, your loan is, is gonna be okay, whether you're applying for a disaster loan. Um, so there, there are a few things to keep in, in front of your mind and uh, a few things to be aware of in terms of what to expect. Absolutely. So let's talk about those. You brought some of those, um, you know, items up. A lot of times, you know, in this area, when we think about disaster, we think about a tornado coming through and taking out barns or facilities and things like that. And we were talking earlier about how all the community shows up to help and pitch in. And that's such a sense of community when that happens. But then when everything's cleaned up, the disaster, some of those effects are still there. Right. Yeah. And, it, you know, farming is unique in that it can be isolating. You know, you're there on your on your property. You may not be able to run into a lot of people. Absolutely, and and that you bring up a good point because you you still might need to check in on that farmer after that disaster, even after the barns rebuilt, even after everything's picked up, because there are some long term, and they just might need somebody to to talk to about that situation. Right. Yeah. So we talk about um, being present uh, after you know the the initial response and managing self care for farmers um, and making sure that people have something to talk to uh, you know there are the immediate logistical sort of steps that you take uh, that are required to be taken immediately like documenting to make sure uh, you know all of your assets are are appropriately documented whether it's uh, for an insurance purpose or for you know a loan for FSA for NRCS regardless there's um, sort of that immediate need to be present and aware to make sure you're safe, make sure your neighbors are safe, make sure you're um, documenting all the losses and the assets. Uh, and then, um, you know, the, the stress and the cortisol and the anxiety sort of uh, take a different form. And, you know, typically people kind of um, feel more isolated two or three weeks after a disaster when it starts to hit them, when they start to realize, what am I gonna do for the next Few months how am I going to get things in order so that's the time that you know the community really has an opportunity to check in and stay with and um, be aware of you know folks emotional and mental well-being and that's a great reminder for the community because a lot of times we do we respond but then we go about our daily lives and forget that aftermath of checking in so that's a great point I appreciate the information if people were watching today and they're like you know I want more information or maybe I want to develop a plan um, or get more involved, who would they contact? There are a lot of resources online at the University around disaster response and disaster preparedness. And I'm certainly willing to put my name out there and, and let folks communicate with me if they're uh, in that situation and need some help. All right, well certainly appreciate the information and if you have questions, make sure to contact your local extension office. Thanks for watching and have a great day.